Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Friday, June 7th, 2019, and today we're going to be looking at the 2020 presidential electoral, electoral map uh, and determine whether or not we could see a repeat of what we saw in the 2008 presidential election when Senator John McCain lost to uh, Senator at the time, pres now President or former President Barack Obama. So looking at the electoral map, it was an absolute blowout for the Democratic Party. They got a near 60 seat majority in the United States Senate, expanded their seats in the House of Representatives past 250 seats, winning a seat in states like Idaho and a number of other states dominating in the South as well. Uh, and then looking at, um, if we're just looking at the overall, I guess, push, the country definitely took a leap towards the Democratic Party. Not a step, but a leap. And if we're looking at this map, there are a lot of states that are very, very close. And the reason why I'm thinking about this is, number one, because we have a former 2008 candidate. We have Joe Biden running in the 2020 race, and I think that could be pretty interesting, throwing him his name into this uh, entire video. Not just him, but also um, candidates like him or new candidates like Bernie Sanders, Tulsi Gabbard, Elizabeth Warren, and also looking at the margins then, because if we look at the, uh, I guess, approval ratings of the president, a lot of these states that are blue here that were red in 2016 are showing negative approval ratings for the president. Now, that may just be by chance, but if we're looking at a number of states, states like Kansas, states like Missouri, they aren't too fond of the president, and they should be solid Republican states. In 2008, it was an amazing election for the Democratic Party. They came within 0.1% of winning in Missouri, narrowed down even uh, John McCain's home state of Arizona, got very close to winning in Montana, narrowed down up across that red wall except for Oklahoma. So when we're just looking, um, the Democratic Party definitely did a lot better. And if we're looking at a number of these margins, well, Michigan was safe compared to Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan, Minnesota, which were all likely. It's just very interesting looking at these election results. They definitely held a lot of good news for the Democratic Party. So the question stands, could we see a repeat of 2008 and 2020? Well, that really all depends. There are a number of states that could very well go to the Democratic Party from the 2008 map. States include New Hampshire, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Iowa, Ohio, Virginia, Florida, North Carolina, Colorado, Nevada. A lot of these states you can expect to go to the Democratic Party. Now, of course, there are some states that are probably not going to go for the Democrats. Those states include states like Indiana. Um, but other than that, a lot of these other states are pretty realistic, including Nebraska's second district. Now, I wouldn't exactly say that Joe Biden would make West Virginia close or Bernie Sanders would make West Virginia close. Um, but there are some Trump voters that may be, more, may be more inclined to vote for, let's say, Bernie Sanders over Donald Trump in certain states. But if we're looking at the entire electoral map, Barack Obama definitely was able to narrow down a number of these states from what we're used to seeing. We're used to seeing a lot more safe Republican states, including states like Missouri and Indiana that are now close or Democratic on this map. And keep in mind, this was about 10 years ago. So 11 years ago, this election occurred. Um, I get that seems like a pretty long time, but that's only two elections. We're coming up on our third since then. But if we're looking at the 2008 map compared to 2020, just 2016, completely, um, I guess, a huge turn. OK, we look at Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, all Republican states, Ohio, Indiana, uh, Iowa, Missouri, North Carolina, Florida, all of these as Republican states as well. Very, very interesting. Now, if we're looking at um, the map itself, well, Looking around the Sun Belt, this could be a very likely scenario. This is not unrealistic whatsoever. In fact, you could probably expect Arizona and Texas to be narrower in this election. So let's actually move that into the lean column, Colorado and Nevada. Nevada, you'd probably expect to go into the lean column for the Democratic Party. But other than that, that's generally the same. The state winds are around the same. Looking up across the red wall here, the only change I would make for the 2020 election would be Nebraska's second. Um, you could pretty much expect that one to go narrowly for the, Demo for the Republican Party. Um, but I'm going to put that one in the Democratic column for right now and revert um, the numbers here just so you guys would have um, an understanding of what the 2008 map was like. But yeah, looking at those states, that's pretty much the only changes I would make. Now, looking over here, the Rust Belt is an amazing area for the Democratic Party. I do not see them carrying Indiana. I do not see them getting close in Missouri. So those are two states that you can narrow out away from the uh, GOP. But these states themselves definitely are going to be very contested. I'm not going to think... Miss, uh, Michigan or Wisconsin or Minnesota or Pennsylvania are going to be 12, 13, 17 point margins for the case of Minnesota, not Minnesota, sorry, Michigan. Um, but I do think that these states definitely could get uh, as actually not as 
good for the Democratic Party, but still in favor of the Democratic Party, joined by Indiana, sorry, not by Indiana, Iowa and Ohio. I think that the Democratic Party um, does not have a chance in Indiana or Missouri, which is why I've characterized both of those as uh, le safe Republican states, actually. Uh, now Missouri is going to revert back. Looking at the South, there's not much... There's not much to see here. These are just swing states that went for the Democrats, Florida, North Carolina, and Virginia. But it was a big deal because North Carolina last went for the Democrats in, 90, in 64, I believe. Also, Virginia back in 64. Um, Florida, I believe, was 96. That was the last time. So it was pretty big, a pretty big deal seeing a lot of these states turn red to blue. And also Virginia going from a presumably solid or likely Republican state all the way into a likely Democratic state. That is also something that changed in a short four years from Bush to uh, Obama. Now, if we're looking there, that's also an area where we're not seeing too many abnormalities. It's just the only abnor abnormality in this entire map would probably be the margins for the Republican states, states like South Carolina, Mississippi, West Virginia, Montana. We wouldn't expect those margins in today's day and age, uh, but the winner was around the same. Looking up in the Northeast, that's also very consistent with what we see in today's elections. The Democratic uh, candidates winning in here, whether it's the Senate governor elections, for some of those, there are some safe Repu Democratic states that have Republican governors, which is pretty interesting. But still, Generally around the same results as we'd expect. The only state that could we could characterize necessarily as completely off would probably be Indiana. But other than that, this is a pretty realistic map. Let's say Indiana goes to the GOP. This could very well be a map that we could see in 2020 if Donald Trump loses um, pretty badly. This is not a likely scenario, but it is a possible scenario. Adding Indiana in really uh, stretches the whole, um, I guess they argue, uh, the argument that it could be a possible reality um but now looking without indiana this seems like a very possible reality i'm not saying this is going to happen but if the democratic party is able to play all of their cards right um this could be an eventual scenario i'm not saying that these margins are going to stand true but there definitely could be a narrowing in a number of states and a gain for the democratic party even in some of those trump states from 2016 such as iowa ohio michigan wisconsin and pennsylvania and not only there, the Democratic Party does have a shot at states like North Carolina and Florida, though it's not likely. Again, it is still possible. And if they were to win, it would be by around that margin, a lean margin. I don't really expect anything else or better for the Democratic or Republican parties in both of those states. Um, so you can expect both of those to um, you know, fluctuate between uh, candidates in terms of polling data, um, but still uh pretty much lean in favor of the GOP. So right now, if we're looking at, let's say, a Biden-type candidate, he definitely could be the best candidate to uh, hold on to a map like this. He was the one closely uh, closest to Obama. He would be able to bring out minority voters in states like Virginia, North Carolina, and Florida. But if we're looking around a number of these states, uh, you know, we would expect to go... Um, would be a little bit more lenient on the Democratic Party. States like Arizona would definitely be a lot more inclined to vote for a Democratic candidate on a presidential level than Kansas or Nebraska. Uh, and you can really see that if we look at Arizona's voting history. In fact, it recently elected a Democratic senator in 2018, which is very, very interesting. They have a special Senate election coming up in the 2020 election. Martha McSally is running again. Um, but yeah, looking at that, uh, this is just, um, if we're looking at the electoral map itself, it's pretty much an example of what the Democratic Party could do if they had a pretty good scenario, um, minus Indiana. I think Indiana is a stretch. But if we're looking, this isn't the best case for the Democratic Party. They definitely could carry all these states and more. Um, they definitely would be uh, have a real shot at states like Arizona or Georgia, uh, possibly even Texas, depending on the candidate. Though it's not likely. Um, there's a very small possibility, but it's still a possibility regardless. Uh, but looking at this map, it's not too unrealistic. Uh, 2008, I just don't think will be an exact embodiment of what we might see. But the Democratic Party does pretty well. We could see an electoral map this way. So if we're looking back, um, 2008, there were different electoral numbers. I'm pretty sure Obama got 365. Uh, and McCain got 173, if I'm not mistaken. Well, now would be a little bit more in favor of uh, McCain at 179 uh, and the Democratic candidate at 359. But again, the strongest Democratic candidate that I think could actually pull this off would either be Biden or Sanders. But other than that, you can't really see Elizabeth Warren winning in all of these states unless something changes between now and general election. Let's say if she is a nominee or things, anything really changes. Um, it would just all depend on the candidate. But the two strongest candidates we could actually see having a close to um, similar reality for the election. If they play all their cards right, keep that in mind, would be Joe Biden or 
Bernie Sanders. So that pretty much finalizes today's video. Thank you guys for watching this video. Comment down suggestions below, and I will see you all tomorrow.